Thank you for tuning in to the Ultimate Coach Podcast, a companion to the transformative book, The Ultimate Coach, written by Amy Hardison and Alan D. Thompson. Each conversation is designed to be a powerful wake-up call, reminding us of what's possible for you and your life. So if you're on a journey to expand your state of being, this podcast is for you. Welcome to another episode of the Ultimate Coach Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Meredith Bell, and I am really excited today to welcome as my guest, Matt Evans. Matt, welcome to the show. Howdy. (laughs) That's so funny for you to say howdy from the UK. (laughs) Look, I'm American at heart and everybody knows it. I was born in the wrong country. That's great. Well... Many of our listeners are probably very familiar with your name from some of them having attended the event in Birmingham in late May and others certainly having seen all the announcements and promotions about it. And we're going to talk about that event. But first, I would love for you to share the backstory of, you know, your life and what led up to you learning about the Ultimate Coach book and some of the events that have happened along the way since then. Okay, so how I came about with this, how far back do we go? Okay, so the the quick version of my history. For years, I was in a a really bad place, mental health-wise. I was what most people would say is the poster boy for bad men's mental health. And the way that I say the story is, you know, I had a good job, I had a nice house, two cars on the drive, beautiful wife, you know, kids. I was the guy that fixed everyone's problems, life and soul of the party. Everything was kind of on the external, looked great. And internally, I was ruined. I had depression, I had anxiety, I was suicidal, and I was drinking to the point of destruction. And actually... There was there was a moment where it was all going completely wrong. I ended up in a police cell one night. And that was a pivotal moment in that I said, okay, enough is enough. And over the course of 48 hours, I had a, a realization that I either carry on with this life or I don't. And if I carry on with this life, it's about having what I want. I wanted my wife. I wanted my kids. I wanted my family. And I wanted to change who I was. And what happened was this was all during COVID. And so, you know, I have a brain. I have a rather good brain. I've got an engineering background. Problem solving and fixing things and creating new solutions has always been who I am. So I put my engineering brain and my analytical brain to work on, okay, Who am I being and why am I doing what I'm doing and what's all the thoughts and where's it all coming from? I did, you know, some counseling and yeah, I I really went to work on who I was. And within that process, I was involved in a lot of online groups for people with alcohol addiction and alcohol problems and substance abuse and whatever you want to call it. And very soon, I actually started helping a lot of other people. I found it was quite a good thing. I'd always mentored people in work. I'd always had my own staff that I'd coached and supported along with other people. You know, I'd had graduates into me and and done all that kind of stuff. But during COVID, there was so many people going through, you know, this alcohol problem during lockdown, and I was actually helping a lot of them. What actually happened was that in one group, I started talking to someone who was a professional coach. It's what they did as a living and it's who they were. And, you know, we talked about some stuff around, you know, what they were dealing with and I helped them work through some things. And her words to me were, how are you not in this world? She's like, you know, it's what you do. It's who you are. And I was like, I've never thought about it. And a couple of months later, it was October 2021, I think it was. She messaged me and said, you have to get hold of a copy of this book. And I was like, what book? 
And she was like, there's a book that's just come out called The Ultimate Coach. And I was like, all right, sounds a bit grandiose. You know, I, I was, I'll admit, I was a little bit judgy at this point. And she said, she was like, right, don't look at the numbers. Don't look at the big money involved. And she said, you know, take away the talk about the Porsche that's in there a lot. She said, read about who this guy is. She said, you will resonate with him so much. I was like, okay, I trust you. I'll take it on your word. And I got hold of a copy of the book on Kindle, downloaded it that afternoon, walking home and got home, started reading it. And she wasn't wrong. I started reading that book and it really did resonate. And I got about halfway through, I was at the point where, you know, Steve was talking about being at Roxel and and some of that career area. And I ended up messaging him on Facebook Messenger. Hey, Steve, you have no clue who I am. I'm a guy from the UK who's just reading the book about you, about me. And we had a couple of messages. And within about an hour, it was half two in the morning for me, I ended up on the phone with Steve Hardison. And it was quite funny because I'd come downstairs. I was on FaceTime with him. And Kate, my wife, she comes downstairs going, are you on the phone? I'm like, yeah, I'm on the phone to Steve Hardison. Stay high. And she was just like, oh, I'm going back to bed. Yeah. And yeah, from that moment, we, we were talking and he said, there's a Facebook group being set up. He said, you know, talk to Eric. And I said, well, if I could be of any help, brilliant. You know, I've been running these groups online through COVID. I, you know, helped admin for groups of eight to 10,000 people. I said, if, if they want help, count me in. So the night that my son was born, Kate was in labor. I was actually outside the labor ward on the phone with Eric Lothholm and Tony Schmaltz talking about, you know, running the Facebook group and helping them. And, you know, that's that's why there's always kind of a really fun little story that, you know, I, I often talk about where there's a will, there's a way. Well, Will's my son who was born the night that I signed up to say I'll help with the the Facebook group. And yeah, it it just went from there to three weeks later. Matt Smith said, I want to do an event in the UK. Who's in? And I was the first person to throw my hand in. You know, I said, Matt, I bet you've not run any events before. I'd done some events in the past, you know, commercial work, supplier events, and, you know, hired places, had 300 people in a room and and done some stuff before. So I was like, count me in. And that's how I ended up project managing the the London event effectively. And it, it just kind of rolled from one thing to another, just saying yes to a lot of things, being open to the conversation and going with the flow all the way through to once we got through London, it got a bit itchy. The The story between London and Birmingham is that there was four of us who were all having dinner at my house. There was Fiona, Bush, Rag and me. You know, we, we were all kind of part of the London team and they all came for dinner at my house and we all were sitting around my table going, then there's there's more to go with this. <laughs> and we all started kind of looking at each other. <laughs> and that was the start of the conversations that were like, do we go again? Mm-hmm. And it was getting very itchy to do something else. You know, we knew how good London was. And then we said, okay, well, what can we do next? And it it started the whole whatsapp group that we had between us of going hmm, okay if, if we were to do one what would we do and where would we do it and the, the conversation started snowballing until the point when it was oh okay let's do it <laughs> so yeah it, that, that's kind of the the history of how i got into the whole tuc thing it was it was literally part of my journey from you know complete chaos into I don't even know what it is flow love giving service everything that I am now and I was then I just didn't know how to show it properly love that you just said that yes we all have this within us and it's a matter of I guess peeling back the layers and uncovering what's really there to begin with well, I'm curious, after you read the book and, you know, you helped with the London event and then were inspired with your colleagues to put on the Birmingham event, what were some of the 
drivers of that? What was it that caused you to say, this is something we must do? Okay, so when we put the Birmingham brief together, I had a few really big, what's the word, goals for it. And it was around, it was purely around service and giving. You know, Steve's talk in London, I don't remember much of it because, you know, when you're running the event, you don't remember as much as what you kind of hit take in. But yeah, there was a section he talked about giving and not taking and, you know, how to receive. And the bit that really resonated, you know, because I've always come from that. I always just want to give if I can. And the work that we have within this whole philosophy of who you're being, the whole nature of it can give so much. And for me, there was, this has got a bigger audience out there. And the more that we put it out there, the more that people will resonate and the more good it will do. Now, I said, if we want to do this to really push it, we have to do an event that runs on its own without Steve. And I talked to Steve about this. Steve was the first person I rang and said, I want to do this and I don't want it to be around you. I really want to push that point. So there was two really big goals within the Birmingham event that it was A, an event that is nowhere near Mr. Hardison being on the bill. It was all about people who could talk about being, talk about who they were, talk about their experiences in the world. You know, the work of who you are and who you're being at any moment and what that can really provide to everybody else. That was a huge give. And the other one was by doing this, you know, we could create a, a really good donation for charity, but it could also prove that it could create something that was sustainable. If we're going to carry on doing these events, it had to be a sustainable model that says we're not always relying on everybody saying we want to go and hear Steve. It was relying on people saying we want to go and hear about being. We want to go and hear what's the possibility for us as an attendee out in the world for being, you know, anyone that's out there. You know, I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying the st the speakers we had were anyone. We had speakers that were out of this world, brilliant, and yet they came at it with so many different angles and so many different backgrounds that we had something for everyone, and that everybody could hear something different from each person. And it was always about creating an event that would create, you know, potentially a sustainable rolling model of events around being. So when we talk about it's about you, it really was about you. And we always push the narrative. It's not about Steve. It's about you. Hence the reason why I always had the idea that Steve would be there. And yet he was never, ever on the bill because we wanted people to come of their own volition and their own want to hear about who they can be, listening to the amazing speakers we had to talk about who they are and what being is for them. I think that's so wise because I think it would be a mistake to have everything focused around one individual. I love that you had so many different speakers who came at being from very different angles. And I would love for you to just share a few of those, you know, maybe contrasting different things that they either talked about or uh -huh. where they were coming from in their experiences. Uh, I mean, we we had the whole range. I mean, I mean, when we <laughs> it was quite interesting. We we said that you know from day one, we want to have the absolute spectrum. We want people from all corners of the world that we can get. We said we want diversity in terms of people, sex, color, background, you know, religion. God knows what we wanted to have the broad range so that people could come at this and identify with, hear different backgrounds, hear contrasting views. I mean, you know, uh, Jackie Moses, she's amazing. You know, she came at who she was being and what she brought was just an amazing, calm presence. She was talking about, you know, doing work with people in the prison service and the abuse that she'd had and she, who she was, you know, from, from that point, 
And then, you know, the the night before you'd had Karan Rai, you know, this huge presence on stage talking about, you know, flying around the world, doing marathons on every continent and, you know, that real, you do it at all costs, you know, very, I won't say gung, uh, gung-ho, he's not gung-ho, you know what I mean, you know, just massive kind of action type guy. And, you know, everything in between, you know, we had Gary and Rag, you know, really good fun, lighthearted on the Sunday morning. We had Caroline, she had everybody up and dancing, you know, doing a whole thing around river dance and, you know, what that was culturally from her background in Ireland. And we we just had such a wide spectrum. You know, Becky Robbins talking about, you know, her background and injustice and how she felt through, you know, certain years in her life and, and where it had led her to. We couldn't have asked for a more diverse group and they all were brilliant. You know, Martine Cannon, wow. You know, Martine finished up the whole event for us and there was a reason why we knew we had to have her finish because what she brought to that stage was incredible. You know, the story of who she is right in this moment. You know, a lot of us have these stories about that were like, you know, we did this and it was brilliant and look how it ended. Martine brought her this is who I am being right now and this is what my life is and she literally just ripped open everything about who she was being in this moment and the strength and the struggles and the grace that she is going through it it was just a it was a masterclass and a powerhouse all in one of who you can be at any moment yeah I cannot say enough good things about every single person on that stage they were all they were magnificent and they were truly there because of who they are. I, I picked up that just watching some snippets here and there of things that have been posted since the event and yeah. the energy. Talk a little bit about what the energy was like there when people were focused on who they were being in the presence of that entire event. It was like nothing I've ever felt. And I don't mean that as, you know, hey, I'm, I'm bound to say that it was your gig. It truly was, you know, during the day, there was moments where I kind of just stood up on the corner of the stage, looking at what was going on during some of the breaks and how people were interacting. And th- there was absolutely a brilliant buzz between everybody in all of the segments. You know, there was such a really good, fun, lively energy. And yeah, when everybody then kind of calmed down, and were listening to the speakers, you could hear a pin drop. You could feel the focus that was going on. You could, you know, you could tell that everybody was so engaged. It, it was, it was buzzing in both ways. There was this real focused energy, and you know, when it came to kind of being broken up a little, it just lifted. There, there was such a fun atmosphere. No. I think fun is so critical in the scheme of things when you, in, in being able to learn if we're very serious and intense and, you know, that can get in the way because I've done that myself. But having that lightness and the fun while still being very focused on the speaker and what's being shared. Yeah. Being honest. Being an event run by me, it was only ever going to go one way. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, there's not many events you go to in personal development where everybody walks away with a baseball cap on their head. So, yeah, you know, we, we, we had some fun. We made it good fun. You know, we had baseball caps and chocolate all around. And, you know, the music playlist we had was pretty upbeat. You know, we, we deliberately kept the music quite raucous and energetic. So yeah, we we knew what we were trying to create, and it worked. I mean, the the venue we had was good. Yeah, and let's go back to the preparation, because an event like this doesn't happen by accident. Just what you've said shows so much care with the details. And I would love for you to talk a little bit about were there challenges, I'm guessing there were, that you individually faced or the team faced, and how... How did you work through those? How were you all being to make all of this work? 
Well, I mean, first off, I have to say that I I had the most amazing team around me to support me for this. You know, as as much as I might have been the face of it, I had some incredible individuals supporting me all the way throughout this. Rose Latham was, I will only say, a magnificent titan in this, in how she handled all the speaker side of things, who she was for me, you know, Fiona Ross. She was effectively my right hand throughout all of it. Angie, she was so supportive throughout the enrollment. Andreas, Ruben in the, the social media side. Cassie, you know, doing all the the, the day plan and the, the event for, you know, how does it feel when you walk in there? You know, I had an amazing team throughout this to help me create it. So, you know, I don't want, I want to make sure that this is not a, hey, it's a Matt Evans road trip. But what was the biggest challenge in all this was actually we had a venue switch and it got quite heated, let's say, between the original venue and myself. You know, we we started this off as a charity event. We I mean, finished the charity event, should I say. But we realized we weren't going to get the numbers we originally wanted. And we had to go to the venue and say, look, you know, we've, we've got this contract in place. We both signed up knowing what it was and that there was a potential risk. And we got a firm, hard, nope not amending a thing and I was like oh so you know they, they've got multiple venues we could have switched to a different place and there, there was a lot of ways that could have been a scenario to to kind of find a, a way through this with them and we got a hard no nope. and so I had to make a decision that it was a it was a huge risk to carry on with the event or we pulled the plug and walk away and be damned for anything that could be after it. So we did that and they sent me a bill, £150,000, which is, yeah, a reasonable amount of money. To which I said, no. I was like, nope. And that was one of the biggest lessons in standing up for this event. I was like, you know, we both knew what we were getting into. If you want to really try and exercise your rights and put your legal team onto this, feel free. But I'm not paying that. And if you really want to push it, let's see where it goes. And I walked away. For the for the service of everybody in that event to still maintain it and that it could still run. And I did have the option. I, mean, I, I talked about this on stage in Birmingham. I had the option to walk away from it all. You know, it, it was it was a heavy weight on my shoulders. There was no doubt. You know, being being threatened with having a legal team put onto you to kind of, you know, take uh, just under half the value of your house. Yeah, I always had the option to walk away. You know, I could have walked away from all of it, but out of service to everybody who had already bought a ticket, out of the service to everybody who wanted to be with us and to still create an event that would create amazing ripples for people who attend, I couldn't walk away from it. I had an absolute outrageous fire that I would not let go of to create this event. And as much as it weighed heavy, I mean, this was right before Christmas. I just lost my job before Christmas and I was dealing with this. There was no way I was walking away. So I'm curious for you to talk about who you were being when you told them no and how did it get resolved? I don't know how this will go down, but when I told them that, I was absolutely shitting it. <laughs> it, it was, it was, yeah, it was one of those where I kind of knew what I was doing. You know, I've dealt with contracts before. I've dealt with multi-million pound you know, get out of jail clauses and, and all sorts in in my previous world. And I always knew that there, there was many a possibility of a way that this could go. And it, it played really heavy on my mind. And yet I had to trust that it would work out. Uh, and when you talk about who I was being throughout all this, there was, you know, there was this was a really noisy period in my life. And actually, a couple of people noticed that I went really quiet. You know, around Christmas, I went very, very quiet, given everything that was going on. 
And I said, it sounds a bit dramatic, but I say that I went through everything that I went through with my alcohol and my, you know, abuse problems four years ago that created a huge shift in me. Reading the ultimate coach and being in the community and, you know, around Steve and everyone that I'd been with helped then create me into a, a much better person. Doing this event and that period was almost the test to say, will it stick? This was the test to say, you know, everything was on the up in the previous, you know, everything, life was getting better, you know, me and Kate were in the best place we've ever been. You know, I was earning more money than I'd ever earned. I was in the, you know, best position of my life, you know, fitter than I'd been for years. It was like, you know, everything was on that upward trajectory. So everyone could swan around going, yeah, I'm amazing. Look at me. And then everything came crashing down into a really hard place of, you know, no job, threatened with legal action, running an event that you don't know will happen, you know, and you've got a lot of risk involved and all this noise. It was like a crucible. It was so much heat that, you know, it, it was it was testing. And I was thinking about how you actually put this into words. And the best way I can say it, it's like when you're forging metal. Heat and pressure creates a better, stronger metal. It puts it into alignment. And going through all this heat and pressure, actually, I went back to what my document was. I started really rereading and going, is it true? I checked myself through every line that said, am I really what I've said to the world I am? And I started making the steps forward, you know, as much as I said yes to a lot of things, this was where I had to say no to a lot of things as well. And... I kind of, I can happily say that I came out of it going, yeah, it's true. I had to remember who I was and it was reinforced. And that helped you be who you needed to be in that moment in the face of potential lawsuit and taking a stand. Yeah, it helped me. I had a good friend, Cheryl. We were on the phone one night because I was meant to be talking to her about some book stuff. And she turned around to me and said, you forgot who you are, right? haven't you? And I was like, yeah, a little bit. And, you know, by going back through it all, it helped me remember who I was. It's like a compass that gets you back out. You know, you're in a hole. And by going through that process and, you know, making sure that you are who you say you are in your document and each of those lines and saying, is it true? Inch by inch, you get yourself out of it and stand tall again. Yeah. I think that's such a powerful process that you're describing there, Matt, because the document has come from us and there is a time we've created it that we know it's true. And yet life throws things at us and can cause us to question ourselves. And that's a very powerful insight, I think, to take the time to go back line by line, not just say the words, but really feel what was meant when you created that line. And when things start to go a little bit sideways and when things start to look a bit tougher, you get to revisit that and it gives you a hell of a lot of a, a guide to say, remember who you are. No matter what you're facing, that is a brilliant guide. Mm -hmm. Well, I would love for you to share, because I'm sure you had lots of conversation with, with people during the event and then since the event. And I would just love, and I think our listeners would love to know a little bit about what are some changes that happened for people? What were ahas or decisions maybe they made as a result of having attended? Oh, you get messages from people about various things, you know. I mean, one of the really nice things that we had was we had some doctors from the, the children's hospital. Mm. So they weren't even from, you know, the community or out of this work before, you know. they We, we gave them a few free tickets to, to say, look, you know, bring some people who can make change in your organization or 
you know, some people who really want to invest in understanding this. And, you know, we, I gave them a kind of quick hour and a half crash course into the whole being side of things and what it can mean and, and how it's affected me and, you know, the introduction to the book. And, you know, after the event, I had all of them message me and say, that that was amazing. We can see how we can use this in our work. We can see how we can bring this into the hospital and, you know, use it with our colleagues, with our patients. You know, they they started to understand what they could do in the community with, you know, what they've learned and what they've heard from various people. I mean, we had a Jeff and Corey on stage, you know, they flew over all the way from um, South Dakota, you know, bringing what they're doing in healthcare and medicine with, you know, the hospital that they're in. And, you know, they to have other doctors hear about how this work affects their hospital and the changes that they've made, you know, it was kind of a, wow, you know, it's not, and this was always part of the thing, you know, hearing other people, hearing the possibility for you, yeah. you had doctors hearing doctors talk about being and what it means to patients and staff. You know, it became so relatable that they could hear the possibility far easier than, you know, hearing someone else talk about it. it it created such a relate a, a relatable opportunity you know i had quite a moment actually during the event that i, I genuinely never ever expected i had someone come up to me hug me and just break down in tears and he said thank you for doing everything you've done and for creating this moment he said i've just heard what i needed to hear to repair the relationship with my son and I was a little bit speechless at that. I kind of just held him because there was nothing else I could say and there was nothing else I could do at that moment. But to hear that, you know, someone can go and have, that someone can see the possibility of a better relationship with their child that was, you know, in a in a bad place, job done, isn't it? You know, that that's what you're there for. That's what you always want to hear. That's exactly why you know back to eating cheesecake at my dinner table we said this work has got so much power and this work has got so much potential that was it in a hug you know that was why we do what we do yeah yes that that's such a microcosm of what happened in general in that event the ripple effect that individual going to his son repairing that relationship and what can happen from there with other people who are part of either or both of their lives because yeah. of their relationship and what they're able to show because of the work that they did. That's beautiful. Yeah. And we still continue to hear these, you know, bits where people say, you know, we, we can see what we can do with it. We can take it and do something different. We can create more, you know, it, it's exponential. You know, 300 people becomes 600 people, becomes 1,200, becomes 2,500, and it just grows. Yeah. You know, for every single interaction, it's what can everybody create in every moment. Well, I'm curious because there were so many speakers there too, and they each brought their unique message. Did you hear from any of them about what happened within them, either as a result of the talk they gave, the feedback they got, or someone else's presentation that they heard that impacted them? It's really interesting, actually. So, you know, behind the scenes, I have the best, greatest WhatsApp group in the world um, that is all the speakers and the, uh, the first line team, effectively. And that there's just so much in there where everybody, it's amazing. Everybody has got so much love and respect for everybody else. You know, there, there's not a singling out, you know, everybody has gone and said, you were amazing. You were brilliant in this. You were brilliant in that. It's just been a, it's been like a flywheel of energy. It just keeps growing and growing and growing. You know, they, everybody bounces off at each other. It's it's been brilliant. I, I couldn't single out a single speaker or a single kind of person that everybody's gone them. Because like I said earlier, there was so much diversity and so much of a difference that 
there was no one brought the same thing. It's almost like you couldn't compare. Yeah. There was there was too much difference to compare. There was just a lot of contrast. Mm -hmm. As I'm listening to you say that, I'm thinking about everybody that brings a dish, you know, to a buffet and each one yeah. can be delicious in its own right. And it wouldn't be fair, like you say, to do any comparison. What I love about what you just shared, Matt, is the lack of competition, the lack of comparison that I think is essential for us to really thrive in life. Because it's so easy to look at someone else and say, oh, well, I did this better or they did that better. And feeling that need to judge and compare. And what it sounds like is it's a judge-free zone with all of them. And it's more of a a loving, caring deeply about each other and, and that elevating and supporting each other. Yeah. I mean, um, one thing I can say that was probably the most interesting thing, you know, I came at this personally from a point of who am I? We all, we always talk about not putting people on pedestals. And I came at it from a place of who am I to be amongst all these? You know, I, I kind of had me just being, okay, I'm the minion who runs this. I'm just the guy behind the scenes. And, you know, these speakers were there, you know, they're, they're all they're all bigger and better than me. They're kind of all the people that have, you know, been and worked with Steve for two or three years. And, you know, I, I kind of did that. And then there was a couple of moments that were really interesting that I had a couple of times when, you know, there was there was times when, you know, Everything was going horribly wrong. And, you know, Karan Rai, Martin Cannon were both really there for me massively. You know, they I had a couple of conversations with those over the course of December and January that massively shifted and helped me see a couple of things. But then there was other times when I had these speakers ringing me, and I'm not going to name who, but, you know, just for the purpose of what people can hear, there was times when, you know, we had these people who are absolute, you know, incredible beings. And even they were a little bit like, oh, how am I going to be on stage? And oh, why am I there? And, and, you know, there was everybody gets it, you know, and, and that was really interesting that, you know, I, I came at this a year ago going, who am I to run all these guys? It was like, oh, I'm, I'm dealing with all these giants. And it was quite a, a leveling process and when I say leveling I mean leveling up you know I mean it massively kind of pulled me up to realize who I was but it just gave me that glimpse of yeah okay e even these people who are absolute giants still get that dip themselves and it doesn't make them any less don't get me wrong it just makes them human and that was the bit that I thought was really interesting from that point of view being the organizer yeah that that was that was a very interesting point and they were all there for each other I mean, one of, one of the people who came brilliantly with it is at the event. Dominic London stood up on stage, and you know when the videos get released, you'll see this. Dom stood on stage and said, "You know, last night I thought about bailing because even I was worried about doing this." And I sat there in the audience, and I was just like, "No, you bloody weren't. I would have dragged you up on this." <laughs> and yeah, I mean the the humility within all of them and you know every single one of them had a humility a grace a strength and a power that was incredible it shows the humanness in all of us our shared humanity of these ranges of emotions and it just is proof that we can never make assumptions about what is going on with someone else that everyone has doubts, everyone has moments when, and that's where to me, what that event did, the elevation of each other is the speakers and of, of the participants. It sounds yeah. like there was such supportive energy in that room that helped people feel loved and cared about. And yeah. what, you know, Matt, as we're kind of Moving towards a conclusion here with our conversation, I think one of the key takeaways is we can all be that for every person in our lives. 
you know, we have that possibility. We have that opportunity, depending on who we want to be in any given moment. Yeah. I'm just curious if you have any other takeaways, thoughts, ideas you'd love to share with us. Whoa. That's a bit of an open-ended, isn't it? It is. I did that <laughs> on purpose. Just, just... <laughs> <laughs> because in the moment, something may occur to you. So just take a moment if you want to. Well, you know, I mean, the, the, the follow-on from what we've just said about, of, you know, regardless of who it is, you know, anyone has that ability to do it. The one common thing between everybody you know, whether it was the speakers on stage, whether it was, you know, my team running the event, whether it was me in terms of everything that led up to the event and and the people that came to the event, the one thing is, is having that commitment to still carry on. You know, that there was people that, you know, I mean, there, there was people that got enrolled to come to this event about 24 hours before we then kicked off effectively you know this was steve at his finest and you know behind the scenes he was enrolling people for us like mad and everybody that has that commitment creates and it was it was about having the commitment doesn't matter how big or how small you kind of portray yourself it's irrelevant it, it's the commitment and still keeping that faith and going after what you want wholeheartedly that that drives it. It's great. I love that. It's a beautiful way to end because I love the tie in with commitment and creating because when you do have that 100% all in commitment, it's amazing what you can create, what will occur to you in order to follow through with whatever it was that you committed to. And we all have that ability. And you know what? There was times when even though it felt like it was bloody hard and, you know, there was so much in the way that you, you know, you could see every issue and every problem, there was still the commitment there. And there was the most incredible team supporting each other. You know, everybody was committed and even in the moments where it felt really hard, everybody had everybody else's back. And, you know, that that was amazing. Great. Matt, thank you so much for giving us a look behind the scenes and before the scenes, <laughs> actually, what happened. How about telling people, what are you up to these days and how can people get in touch with you beyond the Facebook group? which, you know, I know you're very active in the Ultimate Coach Facebook group. So what am I up to at the minute? At the minute, I am actually up to not a lot. I'm having a little bit of a recharge time. It's been a, a very mad year. And yes, I have a few things that I'm thinking about. So I've had a lot of people asking, are we going again? I'm reserving judgment on that. You know, I, I have a a long-suffering wife. If I run an event for every hour that I do an event, she's got an hour of me running an event. You know, it it really is a team effort, especially with having a young family. So, yeah, we're, we're still working on if there's going to be a part three for Evans in the UK or wherever it may be. But yeah, I'm I'm building my coaching business. So I'm doing some supply chain consultancy work, and I'm just taking life as it comes at the minute. No big plans, just easing in and letting it be what it will be. That's great. And which social media platforms are you on if people want to follow you and connect with you? So people can easily find me on Facebook. I'm pretty easy to find. Instagram as Matt underscore loving underscore life. And you can get my website at differentfocus.co.uk. Great. And we'll include all of those on your show notes page. Matt, I want to acknowledge you for the incredible commitment that you put forth in developing, creating this event and making it a reality. And especially with those adverse situations that you 
referred to earlier. And just thank you for who you are being in the world and who you are to so many people. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you so much. It means so lot. It means so much coming from the people that, you know, I hear that from. It's it's truly lovely. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. If there's someone you know who could benefit from this conversation, please share this episode with them. Also, check out our website, beingmovement.com. You'll find valuable resources and links to connect to an engaging and wonderfully supportive community. Together, we can inspire and support each other on the path to a greater understanding of being. Until next time, take care and be kind to yourself.